Welcome to Lay's Little Golden Books. I hope you all enjoy today's story. And perhaps one day, when your kids are grown, they will share these timeless stories with their own children. Lego How to Be a Unicorn by Matt Huntley. A little golden book. Sandy is very excited. It's almost time for her town's costume parade. Everywhere she goes, she sees people getting ready for it. What are you going to be? Sandy asks her neighbors. I'm going to be a raccoon, says Max. My chili costume will spice up the parade, declares Rima. My rocket costume will be out of this world, says Quinn. We don't need to ask you what you're wearing, Sandy. Sandy is already dressed as a unicorn, which is not unusual for her. She loves unicorns. Max, Quinn, and Rima think it's odd to wear a costume before the parade. This unicorn costume makes me feel special, Sandy tells them. When I dress up, everything is fun and anything seems possible. That's not surprising, says Max. Everything you do is a little different. What do you mean? asks Sandy. Most of the houses in the town are painted in bright colors, but yours is brown, says Quinn. Although it is a tree house, which is pretty cool. Everyone else has beautiful flower gardens, says Rima, but you grow big cacti. Also, Max, Quinn, and Rima like fairy tales with happy endings, but Sandy sits upside down on her couch, reading books about building things and watching detective movies. The neighbors run off to work on their costumes, leaving Sandy alone. I like doing all the things they mention, she says to herself. Is it wrong to do things you like? Feeling confused, Sandy goes to her treehouse to give her cacti a little water. A few days later, Sandy feels better. The morning of the parade, she takes off her unicorn pajamas and puts on her unicorn costume. She feels great. She runs through town and crosses the creaky bridge to the park. Along the way, she sees lots of people in wonderful costumes. The park is filled with people who are dressed up. Sandy sees a person wearing a pug costume and another person dressed like a pilot. Everywhere she looks, people are singing, playing games, and eating snacks. Parade time, Rima announces. Everyone lines up, including Sandy. While they wait to begin, the ground starts to shake. Suddenly, there is a loud crash. Is everyone okay? Sandy asks as she runs toward the noise. She soon discovers that the bridge she recently crossed has fallen apart. How did that happen? Max asks. I don't know, Sandy replies. It looks like we have a mystery to solve. Sandy carefully climbs down the hill to the broken bridge and pulls a magnifying glass out of her pocket. She has always wanted a mystery to investigate. Hmm, I see bite marks on these pieces, she says. I think I know what happened. Sandy returns to the park. It looks like beavers have been chewing on the bridge. What can we do? asks Quinn. I've read lots of books about building things, says Sandy. If we all work together, we'll have a wonderful new bridge. That's a great idea, Max says. We can make it really colorful. Sandy draws up the plans and everyone in town works together to rebuild the bridge. Sandy, it was really smart of you to make the bridge super strong so the beavers won't chew through it again, says Max. And I love all the colors, Sandy chimes in. It's a good thing you like mysteries and know about buildings, says Rima. Sandy blushes. Thank you. And I think we can do something to make sure the beavers stay away from the new bridge, Rima adds. Because Rima is good at gardening, she makes a special park for the beavers. Now the beavers have a place where they can gnaw on things, she says. They won't be tempted to bite the bridge. The next day, the townspeople have a surprise for Sandy. They want her to cut a ribbon to officially open the rainbow-colored bridge. The bridge is like our town, she says, snipping the ribbon. It's many different colorful pieces coming together to make something great. Sandy watches people cross the bridge, and she's happy to see some of her neighbors wearing costumes. 
You've shown me that it's okay to wear what you want, says a man in a peapod costume. Yeah, you don't need a parade to wear a costume, agrees a girl dressed like a bee. I don't really like costumes, says another boy. I'm comfortable in my regular clothes. Well, that's okay too, Sandy declares. Wow, exclaims Rima, putting on her chili pepper costume. Each person really is one of a kind. That's what it means to be a unicorn, says Sandy. It's great that we can all be different together. Now who wants to come back to my house and watch a mystery with me? Sandy's friends think that's a great and very Sandy idea. The end.